first podcast we are meeting uh, dr k reddy from hyderabad very well known for uh, zygoma implant specialist zygoma implant surgery is, is doing a lot of uh, surgeries and he is known for his uh, courses and lectures uh, and we welcome for our first podcast and i want to know how you changed from the implant regular implant practice into zygoma what motivated you to start zygoma whether it is a desire or any need uh thank you for uh, inviting me for your first podcast uh, dr murugavel okay. and uh, dr murugavel himself uh, is such a big implantologist and uh, i feel uh, very privileged to be here in his clinic uh, and uh, i really pleasure this moment and uh, i'll remember it for a long time and uh, okay so since you have asked how i moved from implants to uh, zygomatic implants uh like uh, i'm i'm always on the you know a constant run to do something uh, different from what i am doing so i never get settled for less okay. so initially i started from uh, i did my bds and uh, mds from uh, gdc hyderabad uh, i started off doing root canal treatments then uh, somewhere like uh, i had a passion for uh, surgery, surgery side endodontic surgeries so here like uh, root canal treatments uh, i was getting bored uh, i was it was like a monotonous treatment and there is no surprises uh, every case is almost like a routine case so we most of the times we felt like we are just working for a money there is nothing no new or s- s- new new change is there in life mm-hmm. uh, so somewhere like you know and some one doctor has motivated me Uh, dr byju gopalan nayar asked me like since you have a very good surgical skills why don't you move to implants he said then uh, i said like uh, the place where i practice are all uh, middle class uh, patients they cannot afford uh, implants though uh, he said uh, he said only one thing said when you can do root canal with bridge uh, for 12 to 15000 you can same cost you can do one implant so i took his advice and then uh, went to uh, kerala alapi and then learned implants then i was doing some implants then uh, i got stuck with some cases where i want to do something different then uh, uh, i have been advised to go to pune again with okay. dr nanda mm-hmm. dr nanda then uh, after coming back from there i started doing regular implants as well as a by implants okay. uh after doing this regular full mouth full arch full mouth rehabilitations then uh, we had a patient uh, who required uh, zygomatic implants okay. so here there is a uh, small uh, change has happened in my life that when i wanted to do a zygomatic implants that time but i didn't i didn't know how to do zygomatic implants this i am talking about 2016, 2016. august okay. august 2016 the date i clearly remember <laughs> in that during that time only two surgeons uh, in india were doing zygomatic implants okay. so i don't want to name them so i asked them sir can you please uh, teach me how to do a zygomatic implants then uh, they some i don't know whether they were ready or they what problems they had in teaching me one doctor uh, said uh, like you have to be a oral surgeon oral maxillofacial surgeon okay. and you have to be oral maxillofacial surgeon and uh, since you are not you are an endodontist you are not an oral maxillofacial surgeon mm-hmm. so you have no idea about how uh, things works in general anesthesia okay. and i do it under general anesthesia oh. so and i'll train only oral maxillofacial surgeons but uh, i was like you know when somebody says like you know you cannot do it or you know i can't teach you then uh, the passion increases further mm-hmm. that you know if somebody is denying me i don't keep quiet like let us also see how i cannot do it let me try and see how from where i can learn and uh, do it then i asked one more doctor in north india okay even i don't want to name him so i asked him uh, doctor can you teach me a uh, zygomatic implants means uh, he was he is a very nice uh, person and a very nice human being uh, but i don't know what were the reasons but uh, it could not materialize to the extent like uh, he once he said uh, uh doctor i have a patient coming uh, in next month i have to do a zygomatic implants for him so i have to learn before that i want to you know uh, understand the anatomy techniques everything so i want to do it properly because i am doing it on a patient 
then uh, he said no we need five doctors to conduct a course okay. so i can arrange a case but you know arranging five doctors in i'm talking about 2016 it was not that easy mm-hmm. now here every month every 15 days one course is happening mm-hmm. not one course several courses happening in several states but in 2016 there were not many courses not many hardly any courses and nobody was teaching zygomatic implants at all so he said i cannot uh, pull that five participants he said frankly speaking i offered to pay five participants money okay i told him sir you don't search for five participants mm. all that five participants money i'll pay for you okay and i'll come alone you arrange a case and then pay it for you so don't worry about participants then he said uh, okay i'll arrange but uh, somehow it that did not happen okay. then uh, you know i felt like uh, i am being ignored mm. uh, somehow some people don't want me to grow yeah. then uh, i had a huge burning desire to do somehow i have to do a zygomatic implants now it is like a main life motto that i have to do a zygomatic implant then uh, but we have to be honest with the patient that we have to do good work for the patient then uh, suddenly i realized like what could be the best options and uh, i had to look for a youtube video okay. then i saw some youtube videos it they were very interesting so after finishing my practice at 9 o'clock in the evening uh then i even i skip my dinner every day so that you know if you have dinner then you get to sleep so after coming back from clinic i sat in front of the youtube okay. then i used to note down which one is doing which who is doing zygomatic implants most of them were uh, f- uh, italian doctors american doctors european doctors most of them were european doctors dr igal balan was there so then uh, i looked at few of them i note down who is doing zygomatic implants and how this doctor is doing the zygomatic implants okay. i noted down some points uh, on how this doctor is doing so i noted down his name so that i can watch more videos of him mm. next time because otherwise you'll forget those names so then uh, i watched i watched almost like around 150 to 200 videos okay so uh, for a period of 10 days mm. uh, only zygomatic implants uh, zygomatic single double triple though i was uh, intent to do only single mm. but i also want to see the double and triple so that you know we get a thorough understanding of how they are doing where they are in, how they are entering into the zygomatic bone what exactly is going on any important vital structures any blood vessels nerves everything then i started uh, using the google images okay. uh, wikipedia and all then uh, now i have a theoretical knowledge videos I have seen so many videos but i have to implement this uh, practically so i cannot uh, being an endo on this and i never opened this particular area so and it's being a zygomatic implant is a long implant so i was little uh, concerned about patient's health mm-hmm. then i said like before trying it on a patient we should do some practice so that time this stl models were not there, not there. this mock surgery is what now the young generation is doing mock surgeries yes, yes. that time stl models were not there the immediately one idea struck to me that i should practice on a skull mm-hmm. and uh, that time this uh, cadaver courses were also not there and nobody was conducting cadaver courses, courses. and never i had an uh, idea that uh, i should go and do it on a uh, dead bodies mm. so only thing what it struck me is then we will go to my own college in okay. gdc hyderabad okay. so there i met uh, anatomic department uh, assistant okay. he was uh, the department was not willing to share a skull with me because they never wanted somebody to take the skull outside the college mm-hmm. but somehow you know we yeah. managed uh, convinced uh, managed assistant that i'll not throw anywhere because it is a medical legal problem mm-hmm. if i throw this skull outside it becomes a legal problem then i pr- i promised him that i'll keep it with me in my clinic only i just want to use it for my own uh, surgical training purpose then somehow i could convince him i took the skull then uh, i used to keep the youtube video like this okay. and uh, you play for 1 minute and then pause it and then uh, the same procedure i used to repeat it on the skull, skull. Okay. and uh, the he was doing it on a patient mm. here also i kept it like a patient only mm. like it's not Same like you way. turn it in different directions you can easily do it yes, yes. so the way he was keeping Sitting the patient the same thing i was doing it a skull okay. same i simulated it everything i simulated it so that i want to have a real experience otherwise um, you know uh, i'm doing it easily on the skull tomorrow suddenly when patient i open then i'm getting panicked okay. so everything i replicated it on a, i was watching youtube and then replicating on a skull okay. 
then I did my first when patient had come. Then uh, I did my first zygomatic implant on that patient and successfully we could finish in less than 10-15 uh, minutes. Yes, okay. I was like, uh, frankly speaking, I felt like uh, even my wife said uh, it is a pure fluke. What we say pure fluke means it is a sheer luck that you know you just drilled and then implant went inside and that was a cortico basal implant not the conventional implant okay, okay. because in a cortico basal implant I had to bend the implant. Bend. Without bending, no. so only, unless you torque it well, you cannot bend it. Mm. If, if it implant is low somewhere, hanging somewhere else, you cannot bend it. So I could bend it also, implant that means, bend it. That means it is in a right place. Mm. But uh, honestly speaking, um, what knowledge I have today, uh, I didn't have even uh, 5 to 10 percent of that knowledge in 2016. Okay. So somehow I dared to do this, but at the same time I was uh, conscious about uh, the complications. I was carefully trying to do it well. Fortunately, I did well. Okay. Then uh, after this, uh, uh, after operating this patient, one week after operating this patient, I saw a brochure on Facebook or some, mm -hmm. some social media. I don't exactly remember. So Norris was uh, conducting a course in uh, Mumbai. So when the Norris had conducted the course, I messaged doctor saying, uh, doctor, if you don't mind, this is my photographs of my zygomatic implant, which is done just a week back and yes, I restored also. Okay. Patient is doing fine, no complications. Uh, will I, if I attend your course, will it be helpful? Then he said, no doctor, you need not because you have done it very well. I have seen uh, the uh, photographs. You have done it very well. You need not come for the course. Then, but I said like, uh, no, let us learn it more better mm -hmm. and let us see how you are operating, how he is operating. So, I want to see how other are some. Course fees was not a problem. So I went to Mumbai, then a few days, few weeks afterwards, then I tried one more case in my own clinic, then I could do it very easily. Okay. Then uh, frankly speaking, what we are talking about Zaga 1, Zaga 2, Zaga 3 concepts, even those concepts I don't, I don't know. But only thing is, I was observing this maxillary plane to the zygomatic plane. So if it is flatter, how I should go deep inside, how it is, if it is raised, how I should go inside. Mm -hmm. That much I could observe from a YouTube that uh, based on the uh, differences, uh, this is one. But I didn't know that it is nothing but a Zaga concept. Afterwards, when I read, uh, started reading Z what is Zaga, Zaga concept, it is nothing but what is my yes. own observations. It is my own observations is nothing but my Zaga concept. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized, okay, wonderful, beautiful. Then uh, I started doing slowly zygomatic implants and whichever patient has a very less bone, I started doing zygomatic implants. Okay. Then uh, when we start doing, obviously we will start getting more and more tougher cases. Started, people also started referring cases to me that you know, you are doing zygomatic implants, can you do this zygomatic implant? More and more complicated cases, rejected cases were coming to me. Then slowly when there is absolutely no bone, then we started doing uh, zygomatic implants, uh, double zygomatic implants, double quad zygomatic implants. I just started doing. In the meanwhile, uh, COVID uh, has come. And because of this COVID, a lot of uh, black fungus, mucormycosis cases had come. So anyhow, we gained a lot of knowledge in the zygomatic implant. By the time only, I, I must have done almost 300, 350 okay, okay, okay. surgeries by the time uh, we started doing COVID mucormycosis cases. Can I interrupt? Ah, sure, sure, sure. You told uh, at the time you were doing 300 as I ah, was, yes. because I went for a Zygama course. Ah. Uh, during the course, the trainer told, till now he has done uh, 25 Zygomas. Ah. Then I was surprised. So ah. after finishing 25 Zygomas, uh, people are conducting, conducting course, uh, oh, okay. courses. Ah. I was, I no, I didn't conduct course when I was okay. in that stage. Okay. So we started um, like... Uh, 2020 after okay. covid only we started conducting courses mm -hmm. then uh, we started uh, luckily fortunately we also started a mucor care foundation mm -hmm. me and uh, dr swapnil so, and dr ranganath okay. three of us uh, thought like we'll help this because most of the mucor mycosis patients were poor patients Econ yes, economically yes, yes, yes. poorly driven patients so we thought we could help these patients by doing quad zygomatic implants we charged very very less and then try to help those patients okay. uh, you okay. told about your first zygoma experience so at the moment, how you felt yourself, the heartbeat rushing, is it uh, very... Uh, no, difficult? now it is like, you know, I don't feel anything. I, it is just uh, as the normal. First experience. Uh, first experience uh, was a very uh, thrilling experience. Okay. A very, you know, because uh, there was no one around me to guide me. Mm -hmm. There is no, it's not a one-on-one -on -one shadow course. I was doing all alone. And uh, my staff, my wife, nobody knows, has no idea about how the zy zygomatic implants done. 
and when i held that long drill in my hand piece it was like you know it was like uh, wobbling actually it was like you know shaking uh, because it's a long drill it's it's not that easy to control when you're doing it the first time okay. now there are a lot of courses are being conducted now a lot of people are conducting shadow courses so it is far easier now but uh, in 2016 it was very very tough without mentor without, grade. without mentor and uh, only thing what i really love about myself is like uh, i learned uh, these things long back thinking that you know future whenever any any patient who does not have any bone at all obviously will be in lot of demand because there are very few zygomatic implant surgeons yeah. so i thought like in future we could get a very good chance of doing lot of uh, rehabilitation rehabilitating atrophic maxillas okay. now just because of covid because of this mucor case everybody wants to learn zygomatic implants now mm-hmm. now their age is almost 50 55 years now at this stage they want to learn <laughs> so this we uh, well, fortunately have we have foreseen all these things and started doing long back so that is one good thing we have done when you are talking about no you went to anatomy department and uh, got skull yes uh, similar uh, story i have heard here also uh. in madras medical college in mmc <coughs> there is one professor called rangabashi okay so he is the creator of gastroenterology field in tamil nadu okay okay he is the first one to introduce many kind of uh, a special department for gastroenterology happened because of so if next day if some surgery a unique surgery uh, is there what he will do is he will go to anatomy department and get a cadaver and he will operate that surgery then next day he will mm. come and do uh. so the same kind of for uh, uh. him and also i want to share one study <coughs> they did with uh, um, monkeys mm. they want to um, study about the brain activity mm. what happens when the brain activity when the uh, monkey is eating banana okay okay so they were attaching all the things and they are yes. giving a banana to the monkey okay group of monkeys mm. and some group of monkeys are observing the there there are for some study uh-huh. but they are just seeing what See, is happening uh-huh. uh, they are studying the brain activity uh-huh. but surprisingly surprisingly what happens is the scientists found that the monkeys who are observing these monkeys the same brain activity is happening there also oh wonderful Look. because they are actively seeing seeing them and with the intention that i want i also want to eat that banana uh-huh. so the same brain where Uh, that monkey is activated the observing monkey is also activated okay later they named it as a brain uh, mirroring phenomena That's so when we watch with full focus and focus. observation the uh. same uh, areas which the surgeon is activating in his brain uh. it is activated uh, for us also hmm. since you have you know watched those videos and you know tried it with good intention intense intention uh. the same uh, brain activity which has happened for balan uh. Uh, Miguel Balan. Miguel Balan. It might have activated might. for you also. <laughs> that, uh, that is why. 